Today we're going to look at how to solve a system by graphing and by using substitution. The first one here, we've got y equals x minus 7. So for this one's already in terms of y, because y is by itself, which is what, what we want. We want to see the y-intercept the y and the slope, which we do have here because it's y equals. The number in front of x is always our slope. If there's no number there, we put a 1 in front, because that's the number, the coefficient of any number or any letter by itself. So the slope here is going to be 1, and the y-intercept is going to be the constant by itself, which is the negative 7. So the y-intercept tells you on the y-axis where to start. So we look for the y-axis, which is right down the middle of our grid here. There's our y-axis. We're going to find negative 7 and put our first dot on there as our starting value. Now the slope tells us how to move. If the slope is 1, we like to make that into a fraction by putting it over 1. You can always put any uh, integer number without a, without a fraction bottom over 1 because divided by 1 doesn't change the value. This means to go up by 1 because it's positive, and we're always going to go to the right. So either up and right or down and right. So from negative 7, we're going to go up and right, 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, using our slope's directions. And then we're going to use a ruler, in my case a line tool here, to connect these and line up our dots. Whenever you draw a line, go a little bit off the grid in both directions here. Arrows on the end, because there's no reason not to. This is not a real life problem that says that arrows wouldn't make sense. So we're going to use arrows on the ends. And then we're going to label this with the equation y equals x minus 7. That's our first line. Our next one, we're going to do this very similar work here to graph this. The only problem is, though, this is not in terms of y. y is not by itself yet. So we have to do what we call solving for y in order to first get it into that form that we need. So we're going to treat this like a two-step equation. We want to solve for y, so I'm going to circle that to remind myself not to touch that. We're going to move the x's by subtracting 10x from both sides. That will get rid of it on the left side. So 3y is going to equal 18 minus 10x. Just put those side by side. We do not combine those because they're not like terms. It's not 8x, it's not 8. And then we're going to divide everything by the 3 in front of the y. That way that we get just y. 1y, which is y. 18 divided by 3 would be 6. And we're going to leave it as 10 thirds x. That seems kind of nasty. Like, ooh, why would you want to leave it like that? Well, that's actually easier to graph because the 6 is going to be the y-intercept. And the negative 10 thirds will be our slope. And if it's negative, it's going to go down, and it's going to go right 3. So down 10, right 3, starting at our y-intercept of 6. That's how we're going to graph this. So on the y-axis, we find 6, and then we count down 10 from 6, and right 3. So down 10, right 3, and we're going to put a dot right there. And that may be it. We may not get any other dots on here, because if we go down 10 more, I'm off the grid. So that's, that's it. I'm only going to get two dots for this one. I'm going to use my line tool. I'm going to connect these two as best as I can to make the line for that one. Go a little bit off the grid in both directions. Arrows on the ends. And, of course, label again. You can use either 3y plus 10x equals 18 to label that, or you could use the new version that we found. It doesn't matter. They're both equivalent to the same line, so either way you're saying the same thing. Our answer, our solution, is where those two cross. Those two cross at the point 3, negative 4. Always the x-coordinate followed by the y-coordinate. That would be our solution, our answer to this problem. A system always has two or more, potentially, uh, solutions. Because we have two equations, we have two unknowns, an x and a y. There's our two um, answers for x and for y. The next one we're going to do here, we're going to use substitution. So we're not going to graph it. We're going to use the algebraic method of doing this. Uh, what we do for this is we take something that's equal to a, a variable and plug that whole thing in into the other equation in for that variable. So what I mean by that is 4y plus 39, that whole thing equals x. Let me use a little different highlighter here. Let's try this. So this whole thing is equal to x. So that whole thing is going to go in place of x in the other equation. So we're going to write the second equation, negative 5x, but we're going to take out the x and put big parentheses here, keep the rest of it all the same, and we're going to plug that 4y plus 39, that was equal to x, in for the letter x in the second equation. And then from there, we're just going to solve this like you would solve any regular equation that has only one variable in it. 
That's basically what we have here. So negative 5 times this would be negative 20y. And then we'll do negative 5 times 39, which is negative 195. And then bring down the rest of it. From there, we're going to just combine our like terms. Our y's and our y's go together. So negative 17y minus 195 equals negative 25, which makes a two-step. Plus 195 to both sides gives us 170 positive on the right side. And then negative 17y on the left side is still there. It means you're gone. Divided by negative 17 gives us our y, which is negative 10. Now, this is not the final answer. All we've got is y. We need to find both parts of our answer, the x and the y. So we're going to take this value of y, and we're going to plug it in to the either equation, actually, it doesn't matter. I usually use the one that has x by itself because it seems simpler, but you can use either one. So x equals 4 times the y, negative 10, plus 39. So that would be x equals negative 40, plus 39, which is just negative 1. So our answer here is negative 1, negative 10. And once again, we've got our coordinate as our answer with both the x and the y value because a system has an x and a y as part of its solution, not just one or the other. It has both of them. And that's how we use substitution to solve this system.